this video we're going to look at how we can tell how many solutions a system of equations will have. So far the ones that we've looked at had one solution. We were looking for that one point where the two graphs crossed. And so if I drew, let's draw a line here, and if we drew another line we would have one place where these lines crossed. So this had one solution. And we can see that. There's only going to be one point where the two lines cross. But that's not the only situation we could have if we were graphing two lines. I think you could see it's possible that if we It's possible that we could draw a line like this. Let's see if I can draw another one here that never crosses. Okay, so here's here's two lines here. These lines will actually never cross each other. So we would say in this particular case there is no solution. because the lines will simply never cross. No solution. We could also have another situation here where we have one line and what if the other line was exactly right on top of the first one? Let's see if we can do this. Here we go. Oh, yeah, it's not one to put them together. There we go. So imagine we had two lines that were basically the same line. Well then we would have infinitely many solutions because the lines are exactly the same. Well, it turns out when we look at these three scenarios that it's, it's quite easy to tell if there's going to be one solution or no solution or infinitely many solutions because all we have to do is we have to consider the slopes and the y, and in some cases the y-intercept. So if you look at this situation here, two lines are going to have one solution. In other words, they'll cross in one place if the slopes are different. So slopes must be different. Because as soon as the slopes are different, then the lines are going to be you know, at different slopes and will therefore only cross in one place. Or you might have a situation like this and like this. But as soon as the slopes are different, even if they're only different by a wee little bit, like this, eventually way out here they will cross somewhere. So if you're looking at two equations and the slopes of the two lines are different, then you know there must be one solution. There will be one place where those lines cross. Let's take a look at this one here where there's where there's no solution. And what can we see about the slope and the y-intercept? Well these lines are parallel lines. That means they have the same slope. So the slope has to be the same. The slopes have to be the same here. We can see that they're the same. They have the same rise and the same run. But the y-intercepts must be different. So if the slopes are the same, but their y-intercepts here are different, then that means the y-intercepts being different means the graphs are going to be separated here, but the slopes the same means they're going to be parallel. That means we would get no solution. <coughs> never cross. They'll never touch each other. They're separated by their y-intercepts, and their slopes are, are the same. Infinitely many solutions. Well, if you have two lines that are that are uh, laid on top of each other, we call those coincident lines. So if two lines are coincident, there's infinitely many solutions, well really then they're the same line. So the slope is exactly the same here, the rise and the run are the same, and the y-intercepts are also the same. There are two lines with 
possibly different looking equations. And we'll show you that in a sec when we do an example. But they have infinitely many solutions. So every point on the first line is exactly the same as the points on the other line because the two lines are lying on top of each other. So that's how we can quickly tell the number of solutions in a system of equations. And so let's look at some equations and see if we can tell without graphing how many solutions they would have. So the first one here we got y equals 3x minus 7 and y equals 2x plus 5. So if I'm looking at the slopes of these two lines, I see that they're different. And as soon as the slopes are different, so one here has a slope of 3, the other one has a slope of 2, not as steep as the other one, at some point they're going to cross. So this would have one solution. In the second example, I'm going to look at their slopes here again. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I see the slopes are different. So again, this means that there will be one solution. So notice here the y-intercepts are actually the same. The y-intercepts are both minus 2. That means that both of these lines are going to cross here at minus 2. But this one will have a slope of 4. And this one's going to have a slope of minus 7, which is a real steep graph. So it doesn't matter what the y-intercepts are doing. Here the y-intercepts were different. Here the y-intercepts were the same. If the slopes are different, there will always only be one solution. Okay, so if the slopes are different, one solution. If the slopes are different and you can see that the y-intercepts are the same, all that means is you know what the point of intersection is. It's going to be right on the y-axis because that's where the they have the same y-intercept there. So normally it doesn't matter what the what the y-intercepts are. If we see that the slopes are different, just remember there will always be one solution. Different slopes equals one solution. Let's look at another example. Here we have y equals 3x minus 7 and y equals 3x plus 2. So I can analyze the slopes. Slopes are the same. And then now I can look at the y-intercepts. This one has a y-intercept of minus 7. This one has a y-intercept of plus 2. So the y-intercepts are different. That means we're going to have a situation like this. One's way down here at minus 7 for a y-intercept. One's at plus 2. But they're parallel lines because their slopes are the same. So this is going to have no solutions. No solutions. It has the same slope but a different y-intercept. And then looking at this equation here, these two equations, we've got a problem here because we can't quickly tell what the slope and the y-intercept is. So we've got to do a little bit of algebra here. Let's call this equation 1 this equation 2. And I'm going to set them up again down here. So here's the first one. So I'm going to write this in y equals mx plus b form. So bring the 2x to the other side, it's now negative. Bring the 6 to the other side, it's now positive. And then divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. And so now we know what the slope is, it's 2 thirds. Negative divided by negative is a positive. And 6 divided by negative 3 is negative 2. And now looking at equation 2 and isolating y, bring the x over to the other side is minus x plus 3. Minus x really means the slope here is minus 1. Minus 1. Well, they got different slopes. So as soon as I know the slopes are different, one solution. Okay, so sometimes you have to might you might have to do a little bit of algebra here to to isolate y, but as soon as you got y equals mx plus b, you can very quickly compare the slopes and the y-intercepts. And we'll look at one last example here. So two equations. We have a system of equations here. We want to know how many solutions these two will have. We got a bit of a problem because they're not y equals, so let's do that bring the x to the other side, 
is negative x. The 4 is already on that side, so we'll leave it like that. So negative 2y equals negative x plus 4. And then we'll divide everything by negative 2 to get y equals. Negative by negative is positive. I'm going to write that at 1 over 2 so I can see clearly what the slope is there. And then 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. So this one has a slope of 1 half and a b, a y-intercept of negative 2. Well, let's look at the second equation here. Isolating y, so bring the x to the other side. And dividing by negative 6. Gives y equals negative 3 over negative 6 is positive 1 half x. 12 divided by negative 6 is negative 2. So here we can see that the slope is 1 half and the y-intercept is minus 2. Now we'll be looking at both of these things and they're both the same. The same slope and the same y-intercept. That means these are coincident lines. They're basic, they're the same line, the exact same lines. So they have infinitely many solutions. because they lie on top of each other. The two lines would be lying on top of each other. So any x, y value that works in here will also work in here. Um, and actually, if you go back and look at equation 1 and equation 2, you can see that all, all I did to create the second equation here was I took the first one and times everything by 3. 3x, 3x, times by 3, negative 6y, negative 6y, times by 3 is 12. So really those two equations are identical. The second one has just been multiplied by 3. And um, that didn't change anything to the equation when you multiply both sides by the same thing. So these two equations are coincident infinitely many solutions. And so we'll summarize how we can determine the number of solutions in a system of equations. So if our lines look like this, in other words, they're intersecting lines, then we're only going to have one solution. It would be right here. And the reason why there's only one solution would be because the slopes are different. And the y-intercepts don't really matter. In my example here, the y-intercepts are different. And so the lines are crossing somewhere else. But if the y-intercepts were the same, then that's where they would be crossing is right there on the y-axis. So intersecting lines, we will know that there's only one solution if their slopes are different. What if lines are parallel? Well, we know that if lines are parallel, they'll never cross, so there can be no solution in this situation. What do we need to have a set of parallel lines? We need to make sure that their slopes are the same, but their y-intercepts are different. And coincident lines, they are lines that are exactly the same, so since the lines lie on top of each other, there would be infinitely many solutions. All of the points along this line represent solutions to the two equations because the equations are identical. That means they have the exact same slope and the same y-intercepts.